to State of the Arts. Uh, my name is Jason Hedden. I'm your host, and we're coming to you from the campus of Gulf Coast State College in Panama City, Florida. And in this series, we like to talk to some of the local movers and shakers in the arts scene. And my guest today is Professor Rusty Garner, well known to many. Rusty, welcome to the show. Thank you, Jason. It's glad I'm glad to be here. Yeah. So um, let's just start with if there's possibly anybody on the planet that doesn't know what it is you do here at Gulf Coast. Just Remind us what your job is here, how long have you been here, things like that. Well, uh, I've been here 25 years now, and uh, I teach music, of course. Uh, that's my major field. And I also teach music production uh, classes in okay. sound recording and um, uh, sound design, okay. uh, sound for the stage. Uh, I also occasionally will do direct a play. Mm -hmm. Uh, I have an extensive background in theater, and um, I teach private voice primarily. Um, when we get a woodwind player, I can right. teach woodwinds too. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Um, well, in full disclosure, we've known each other for over 20 years, and yes. I was one of fortunate enough to be one of your students. And so, just in case for the folks at home, you know, that know both of us, know that you know. We're acknowledging that's part of it. So what brought you to Panama City originally? Because you, you've not always been a teacher. No, uh, I was a producer for 15 years, and I had a job in Ohio uh, running the Secrest Auditorium and the Muskingum County Convention and Visitors Bureau. Okay. Um, and uh, it was, it was, you know, not, not an ideal situation. It was a lot of money but not a lot of fun. And um, so I had an opportunity to come to Panama City to mm -hmm. run Bay Arts Alliance and mm -hmm. the Civic Center. And it was an interesting challenge. And so I came down on a three-year contract and uh, had a lot, of, a lot of good success at the Civic Center. And um, at the end of my contract, there was an offer made for me to teach as an adjunct here. And uh, I thought, it's time to go back to the classroom. Mm. So I came, came out here, and I've been here ever since. Wow. Cool. All right. Well, so take us back a little ways um, before, you know, growing up, did you come from a musical family? Were your Not parents really. musicians? Not really. Mm -hmm. um, uh, matter of fact, uh, occasionally when the family would get together, they would try to sing, and <laughs> everybody would you know, be ashamed and, and stop <laughs> eventually. But uh, although some some very good musicians have come out of my generation, um, but my parents were both very artistic. They were very good uh, artists, and they were very uh, open to mm -hmm. anything that we wanted to do, my sister and I. And um, music came naturally to me from the very beginning. And so I just gravitated to that and uh, had a lot of success. And when it time, came time for college, rather than go into medicine uh, and have to deal with icky stuff, I decided <laughs> that I'd rather do music. And go into different icky, icky stuff. stuff. right. Yeah. Was that the family pressure for you? you to go was the family expectation that you were going to be a doctor i think that there, there was an expectation but in my family there there was never any pressure on us to do anything in particular they were very supportive uh, i was very fortunate that whatever my sister and i wanted to do uh, my parents were very supportive of that mm -hmm. How, at what age do you, did you start with music lessons or singing lessons, and, and what age do you think is appropriate for, for students to start? Well, I started taking piano at age 10, and um, I, think, I think 10 is a good time. Um, if someone is uh, wanting to get their, their child started in music, uh, four to six is a good age to begin. But the important thing, I think, is that um, children be surrounded with music, that, mm -hmm. that music be a normal part of their daily experience in the home. Uh, you know, playing music, uh, listening to music, um, uh, doing anything like that and trying to let the child have a lot of diversity of what they hear. Mm -hmm. You know, when I was a child, we heard everything from Woody Guthrie to uh, Leonard Bernstein and um, 
uh, everything in between. So um, our my family's uh, taste being so eclectic, I didn't grow up thinking that there was only one type of music. It was just all music. Well, what, what about teachers? Um, were there any influential teachers that you had in high school or college that sort of I don't know, directed, directed your path that led you oh, to yeah. where you are now? Uh, my first band director, Al Poston, who's still alive, um, uh, was a tremendous effect uh, on me. Um, he encouraged me. He wasn't a, a, a my major instrument was bassoon, mm -hmm. and uh, he, he didn't play bassoon, but he encouraged me uh, a lot, and uh, it came easily to me. So. Uh, I had a lot of opportunities very early on. By, by the time I was in the eighth grade, I was already playing in the college band occasionally. Wow. And um, so, you know, that well, was... Now, a, was that because you were that good, or was it because there was no other bassoon players, or both? Well, no, I was that good. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, it's just the way it was. Sure. But um, then I had uh, a number of other teachers, uh, the band director at the local university in my hometown in Arkansas, Arkansas State University, Don Minks. Um, coming out of high school, my senior year in high school, I had an appointment to the Air Force, I got an appointment to the Air Force Academy. And of course my pa family was very poor, very poor. And so there really wasn't any money for me to go to college, but there was certainly an expectation that I would because I'd always been, you know, a straight A student in right. every field and so uh, there was that and I finally called the Air Force Academy band director who incidentally later turned out to be the head of the music department at my local university but I talked to him when I was in high school and told him that I was passionate about music wanted to do that and he said well he'd love to have me in the band out there, but I had to understand that it was really an extracurricular thing that the first two years I was at the academy, I wouldn't be able to to do band. Um, and so if I was serious about it, I might do something else, but I didn't really have a, f a fallback position. So the Don Minks, the director at the local university, uh, heard what had happened with me and he called me in and said, look, I know this is probably not the best school for you, but I will give you a full scholarship and help you find a school to transfer to. And wow. so, I mean, that was a tremendous thing. And yeah. um, later, when I went back to Arkansas to work, uh, I was able to help raise an endowed scholarship in his name after he passed away. So I felt really good about that. But um, it led me to North Texas, mm -hmm. University of North Texas, which is a, a tremendous music school and then on to New England Conservatory. And I had a teacher there who was head of the music lit department, Julia Sutton, who kind of took me under her wing as soon as I registered for my first classes and um, uh, really, really encouraged my writing and scholarship and a lot of other things. And then when I uh, was faced with leaving, uh, after graduate school, she she gave me a lot of insight into mm -hmm. how to stay in the mainstream, whether wherever I was. Well, as as you know, I've told you privately, uh, you were one of those instructors for me uh, when I was a student here at Gulf Coast, and I think when I tried to decide how I wanted to define success, one of the ways I wanted to do that was be by providing the next generation of students some of the opportunities that you and Rosie and other teachers here at Gulf Coast had provided. So, and we're very proud of you. Well, because of that, but I, you know that was a thing with me as well, that I reached a point where I thought, I, I, I think I always felt that if you have a gift, you need to share it. Right. And so coming back to the classroom was really sort of a thing that I always expected to do oh. but uh, once I had gotten my fill of <laughs> the uh, management side of things uh, it was time. Yeah. Well I'm glad you did. Right. Um, so the name of our program is State of the Arts so I want to turn it that direction just a little bit. You've been in Bay County for 25 years or so. How have you seen 
the local art scene uh, change or grow? Or I try not to ask too many leading questions, but what's your perspective? Well, uh, it's when I when I came here in in '88. Uh, for Bay Arts, Bar, Bay Arts Alliance, I was struck by the number of musicians that seemed to be musicians of very high quality that seemed to be scattered around. And I was also um, um, cognizant of the fact that there was no, there, there didn't seem to be any centralized uh, forum or showcase for all of these people to mm -hmm. collaborate and work together and that sort of thing. So, and that, that's really what drew me. You know, if you have the raw resources, right. you can make something of it. And uh, through the years, uh, I've seen a, a growth in the ability of the local mu music community to have an impact and to become more visible. There are a lot of really nice collaborative things happening now. Uh, and it's not just limited to music that uh, you know there are venues in town that encourage creativity in any form, mm -hmm. and um, so I think things are are really on the way, and I'm and I'm still impressed, you know, constantly by uh, the number of really good musicians mm -hmm. and artists that that I learn of. That just this, just uh, recently, I learned that um, the principal bassoonist of the Cincinnati Symphony uh, is a winter visitor here occasionally really? and I had no idea hmm. so um, you know there are some really positive things happening the economy is kind of coming back uh, I don't think we'll ever see the kind of institutional support for the arts that we used to see when I was in the business but um, I, I think I think things are happening that are very positive. The musicians here, I think, especially through some of the programs that we've we've taught here at Gulf Coast uh, about the legal issues in, in the industry and things right. like that, I think a lot of the artists locally are getting a better handle on how they can uh, empower themselves to have an independent career. And I think that's that's wonderful because in many ways that's what the music industry, with all its pitfalls and, and uh, warts, that's one of the things that w we've arrived at. Right. Well, yeah, I, I know teaching the, you know, the business side of it has been one of the great successes of, of the MPT program, Music Production Technology, and now the Entertainment Technology program, which you're the coordinator for. Um, well, we could talk forever, but I know we're on a limited time, so uh, I'll say thank you for now, and I well, appreciate it. Uh, to find out more about uh, Rusty's current projects here at the college, you can go to gulfcoast.edu forward slash arts. Uh, this is Jason Hedden for State of the Arts, and we'll see you next time. Thanks.